back. I'm glad you're here as we continue on our journey to close gaps related to the nurse educator competency exams. If you're not familiar with QSEN, no worries. You will be after we complete our segment today. I want you to head over, if you have not, to QSEN.org. The reason why we want to ensure that you have an understanding of each of these six competencies is because they're interlaced in our curriculum as well as in the certification exam, specifically with the clinical exam, it's competency two, but then with the academic and novice exams, it's actually interlaced throughout several different components of each of the eight competencies, okay? So it's really important content that we wanted to cover here for this session today. To get to the actual area that we're gonna be talking about, you're gonna follow competencies and then to cues and competencies, and then one more click you need to make because we're focusing on pre-licensure. Oh, actually, it went ahead and took us to pre-licensure, so we're all set. This is the page that you want to go to as you review this content after today to ensure that you have closed these gaps. What we love about the layout is that each of the six competencies already have been formatted to reflect the knowledge, skills, and attitudes, or KSAs, that we need to ensure part of our curriculum, okay? So the definition, the first one is patient-centered care, that students are able to recognize the patient or designee as the source of control and full partner in providing compassionate and coordinated care based on respect for patients' preferences, values, and needs. As we think about the importance of PCC or patient-centered care, we want to integrate learning objectives, teaching strategies, as well as evaluation tools and strategies to ensure this competency has been achieved. Okay, that's what all six of these are about. I'm going to stay real high level uh, because I know you all are capable of reading, but I want to just reiterate just a few examples of how we can ensure that these competencies are met. One example is under knowledge for PCC, integrate an understanding of multiple dimension, dimensions of patient-centered care the patient family community preferences and values, coordination and integration of care, information community and education, physical comfort and emotional support, involvement of family and friends, transition and continuity. Describe how diverse cultural, ethnic, and social backgrounds function as sources of patient, family, and community values, right? So you can add an objective and it's already written out for you that the student will be able to achieve um, this specific learning objective at the end of your course. What would that look like? Perhaps there can be an, an assignment. Oftentimes this is through our community health or our public health course where students are responsible for completing this type of assignment. And then the skill. Think about what specific behaviors we expect our nursing students to demonstrate to validate that they indeed have mastered or uh, achieved competency in how to provide patient-centered care to the patient and the families and their friends. So it certainly can be um, observation for, by the clinical faculty. It can also be through a narrative format, right? Students could describe what that would look like. And then the attitudes, um, talking about the expectations that students uh, are able to demonstrate value in healthcare situations through the patient's eyes of being um, patient and understanding, having uh, the ability to listen and to understand what the patient's needs are um, through their family members. Uh, some behavior, some simple behavior such as sitting when we're talking to our patients and our families about what their needs are. So as we think about patient-centered care, what are some of those? Number one, competencies. How are they described in our courses? Um, one example is the adding this as a learning objective. And then what behaviors um, or demonstration opportunities will students have that will um, show proof that they have mastered that skill associated with, again, that specific objective? And then the attitudes. Those sometimes are... Um, only through witness behaviors that we see in the clinical setting, okay? So just thinking about how that all comes together. Now let's move on to the second competency, and that's teamwork and collaboration. We know that the Institute of Medicine has done quite a bit of research on the effectiveness of communication and collaboration across disciplines through our interprofessional or interdisciplinary teams to support the quality 
um, and safety of patient care delivery processes, right? So our ability to collaborate with each other is, is critical to ensuring that patients receive safe care. So one example is students are able to describe their own strengths, limitations, and values and functioning as a member of a team. The fact that they are a novice and that they're still learning as a student um, they are able to, for example, a skill would be to initiate a plan for self-development as a team member. The attitudes, acknowledging their own potential to contribute to effective team functioning and appreciating the importance of having other disciplines as part of the patient care team. So those are some attitudes for that specific um, competency that students would be expected to demonstrate or articulate. Third is the evidence-based practice. The definition is to integrate best current evidence with clinical expertise and patient family preferences and values for delivery of optimal health care. Um, so that is, again, the expected outcome for us as nurse educators to integrate into our curriculum, right? We should be adopting evidence-based practices in our curriculum, as well as how we teach, what our teaching strategies are, ensuring that we are integrating those. First of all, we have to learn about them. So identifying what those are through professional development opportunities, even through mentoring programs, us learning about what other faculty are doing um, and other evidence-based teaching strategies that they're integrating within their courses is also a way to do that. So let's take a look and see what Cusin says. So one example is to demonstrate knowledge of basic scientific methods and processes to describe EVP to include the components of research evidence, clinical expertise, and patient family values. So these are behaviors or learning objectives that we can add to our courses with our students, okay? And then the skills are listed here, and then some attitudes as well, some examples of how students can demonstrate that they, again, have mastered the skill of evidence-based practice and the value that it brings into the patient care experience. All right, so quality improvement, we know that that is continuous, and we want to ensure that we are integrating student assignments and learning objectives that will align with this CUSIN standard. So describing strategies for learning about the outcomes of care in the setting in which one is engaged in clinical practice, students should be expected to seek information about outcomes of care for populations served in the care setting. One good example is a community health assessment. So students being able to identify those trends that they see based on that assessment and then identifying what, um, what additional support or resources that could be added to that community to better support the community's needs. And then last is safety. The definition is minimizing risk of harm to patients and providers through both system effectiveness and individual performance. One example of a learning objective could be examining human factors and other basic safety design principle, as well as commonly used unsafe practice, such as workarounds and dangerous abbreviations. A skill can be demonstrate effective use of technology and standardized practices that support safety and quality. Attitude is to value the contribution of standardization, reliability to safety, and appreciate the cognitive and physical limits of human performance. All right, so a good example that ties to this specific area as well as a couple of the others is going to be the EMR or EHR, the electronic medical or health record. There is huge value to students in nursing programs having experiences with the electronic medication system. Sometimes with the EHR component, students are not given access. Um, the healthcare organization obviously makes that decision or they have limited access. So in order for students to have some exposure and experience to this type of technology, again, to help support the delivery of safe patient care and to mitigate and minimize harm that is associated with medication errors, providing a opportunity for students to practice with a system, a medication administration system is a wonderful experience in the lab or simulation setting. So what would that look like? Uh, well, we have a couple of choices right now. There are actually uh, book vendors that have designed medication systems. They're simulated. 
so the students can have that exposure. And then some universities have developed or adopted their own EHR, so students, again, have that opportunity in the lab setting to practice that skill. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, I encourage you to take a look. Take a look at um, what some of the book vendors offer related to a simulated uh, medication administration system. That, again, is just going to increase exposure that students have and hopefully decrease the anxi their anxiety a little bit when it comes to the first time they give a medication because they would have practiced, right, and had that kinesthetic opportunity um, as well as um, hopefully a formative experience where they're coached and guided about administration and then the summative evaluation that they have been validated as competent related to med administration, um, the med administration process. All right, so that is uh, our last, oh, actually, I'm sorry, informatics. How could I forget informatics? That is also a cues and competency. So that's cues and competency number six, and that's related to using information and technology to communicate. EMR definitely is a, a source for that to manage knowledge, mitigate area error, and support decision-making. So all of those elements that we just talked about related to EMR and medication administration are very relevant for this informatics competency as well. All right, so that sums up, it really does, I'm for sure this time, that's our sixth Cues and Competency. Again, we encourage you to head over to this website to learn a whole lot more than what we're able to capture during this episode. But we hope this has been helpful and we look forward to seeing you next time. If you have any questions, reach out to us at DrSellersEducate at gmail.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Until next time, thank you everyone. Goodbye.